So I took a look at a lot of Instagram accounts that are growing right now like crazy and they all have a few things in common. First of all, they're very smart about their strategy and they did a few things I'm about to show you right now, right. <laughs> Right. Things not so many people do and not so many people actually know about. Honestly, looking at it, things have started to stabilize and it seems like right now is actually a pretty good time to grow if you play the cards right. Now, I'm not just saying that it's very possible to grow on Instagram right now. I actually have data to back it up because people just don't believe it anymore, it seems like. So let me show you something. Remember one of my students, Sophia, from this video who actually had just crossed 10,000 followers on Instagram a few weeks back? Well, I just checked and she just crossed 74,000 followers. Well, so since recording this part of the video, she actually crossed 84,000 followers now. 10,000 more, I guess, which is actually quite a lot more. Way to go. I'm actually very proud. And it just goes to show yet again that Instagram is actually far from that, especially right now. And she's by far not the only one. We have quite a lot of people crushing it lately on Instagram. So let me show you how they actually do it so you can replicate it for yourself. Actually, I'm sure some gurus are just gonna hate me for spelling the secrets here in this video, but especially working with big accounts who grow thousands of followers per day right now, all of them actually have two things of this equation nailed down. And thankfully with this strategy, I'm about to show you both things actually go hand in hand. So listen carefully. Now in my last video, I showed you the advantage YouTube has over Instagram. And I actually still stand by my word that probably for the long run, YouTube will be slightly ahead. But there's one thing I didn't tell you. Even if YouTube will be number one, who actually cares who's number one? Cause uh, yeah, there's still plenty of people on Instagram, even though it will be, for example, number two or three. Ooh, crazy, huh? So let me actually show you how to utilize the strengths of both platforms, especially for short firm content with this first part right here. Students of my creator mentorship program, which by the way, has a few spots open right now. You know, they're gonna be gone pretty soon. Link is down in the description if you actually wanna work with me personally. Anyway, I'll tell them to all publish all of their video content to Instagram and YouTube or Instagram and TikTok, even if they're Instagram first creators. And that's obviously cause of the insights that YouTube Creator Studio gives you. We've talked about this uh, in the last video. And boy, can we dig deep to find why things are working or not to adapt it to our strategy. Let me show you. For example, you're gonna find some spikes and drops that you can actually compare with each other, figure out why they happen, and then adapt these findings to your content strategy accordingly, which is exactly what our old friend Adam Oziri always means when he speaks about, well, in order to grow on Instagram, you're just gonna have to try out new things. Well, that's actually what he means. The only thing people don't seem to get is that new, you know, try out new things, doesn't always mean new. Let me explain. One thing a lot of especially bigger creators constantly do is optimizing their content to the T, meaning they know right after five minutes if the post is gonna flop or not. And they always try to gauge what they could have done better, especially in terms of watch time, which is basically everything for the Instagram algorithm right now. Now, with the help of the YouTube Creator Studio or the TikTok analytics, we now have access to this very data. We can now use it to go back to the drawing board, change some bits around, cut stuff out, re up and actually then see what will happen. AKA what I always call repackaging, kind of like what I did with this account in this video, actually where I basically showed you how powerful just a slight repackage can be. Don't forget to watch this afterwards. Afterwards, not right now. <laughs> now here's the bit almost nobody's aware of, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do these things I just talked about. And it ties right into the second part of this whole equation. Did you know, or did you ever think about that you can actually upload multiple versions of the same reel, slightly change the hook, for example, or cut out parts where you see a bigger drop of retention and then upload it again as a new upload. People are just not gonna notice, or at least most of them are just not gonna care, simply because short form content is just short lived because it's yeah, similar anyway. I work with creators having multiple millions of followers who basically re-upload their content, just tweaking it slightly 27 times in a row until they actually get the metrics they think they deserve. And yeah, with this principle, you can basically take one content piece and create three, four, five versions of the same video to test it against each other. 
other. Of course, not at the same time, obviously, but if you space some time between those posts, especially if you analyze them in the meantime to make changes, you're probably sitting on a lot of untapped content already, especially if you take a look at your previous content. I'm pretty sure you'll find some things that you could repackage and optimize. The side effect of this is actually being able to churn out way more content with not too much more effort. Talk about consistency. The other thing, the Instagram algorithm really loves a lot these days. And uh, yeah, this is kind of where it gets full circle. So let me show you exactly where to start and how to go about this, what we just talked about. First of all, you're going to want to upload all of your reels to YouTube shorts and slash or TikTok if you haven't already, just to get the data. Afterwards, after you had it on there for, for a while, you can throw them all up there at once. I just have to say, because people are going to do it and then they're going to blame me. Then once you have it on there, try to spot when people drop off the most, for example, as the first step. And then you're going to edit your videos according to this intel that you just got. For example, if there's a steep drop, there might be something that can be optimized or cut out. Now, here's a bonus tip. If you have time, create another version with a totally different hook in the beginning, for example, with a voiceover or, you know, one of those AI voices, for example, and upload it as well after a few days or a few weeks just to test it out against each other. And then you're just going to want to re-upload this to Instagram and wherever else you, you now obviously upload this to to get the data and just rinse and repeat. Obviously leave some days, weeks, maybe even months out in between, right? To uh, yeah, they not always have the exact same stuff. If you notice that things don't perform at all, just delete them after a day and re-upload them again. Don't worry about it. It's not gonna matter. The algorithm's not gonna punish you, especially if you change some things out, some slight changes. And by the way, if you wanna do all of these things with me together personally, get a tailor-made strategy plan that me and my team come up with and then actually me and my team will help you execute this whole thing over the next few months and basically take you by the hand and a few other cool things but i'm not gonna get ahead i actually have a few open spots for my creator mentorship program right now we have about five spots available so just fill out the form down below creatormentorship.com hop on a call with somebody from my team where we'll actually take a look at your current strategy and then we're gonna see what we can do and what we can fix and we'll take it from there. Now, this whole posting your content to another platform also has another reason. And it's something I've done quite a bit of research about in the past. Some Instagram accounts seem to be lost in some sort of algorithm entanglement where they just can't seem to get reach anymore. Some might actually call it shadow ban and they might be onto something here. Shadow bans don't exist. Shadow bans don't exist, my ass. <laughs> But usually it's a little bit more complicated than you might think. But yeah, by posting your content to at least another additional platform, you're probably going to see pretty quickly whether it's really the bad Instagram algorithm or shadow ban, or you're going to see, for example, that your content is to blame or not. If you, for example, start to get a ton of reach on YouTube shorts. Plus, and that's another thing a lot of people underestimate, I guess, you also actually built another audience on the other platform, which is very, very convenient. We've actually had that happen quite a lot, more than it should be probably among my students from my course, The Black File, and also the Creator Mentorship. And this just might help you make the decision to start a fresh new Instagram account like we once talked about here on this channel. Plus, obviously, you could potentially have 10 times as big of an audience with the same effort just because it's additional exposure from multiple platforms with basically the same aim so you know nothing lost i guess now to be honest with you there's one thing i didn't tell you up until now real successful creators who grow right now use this strategy and combine it with what i call the content tree strategy and actually if you do combine these two that's it's really going to hit the fan. And this video will actually show you how to go about mapping out this content tree to get the algorithm on your side faster than you can say, Hoochie Mama. Wow.